The review is a bit weird because did you not read the title? It's right here. A history of humankind. What did you expect? Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. I just don't have to agree to, with them. Have you ever met a teenager that isn't terrible? They're not lovable. No one likes teenagers. Not even teenagers. I hated teenagers as a child. I hated teenagers as a teenager. I hate teenagers as an adult. No one likes teenagers. <laughs> Welcome back and if you're new here, hi, my name is Daniela and today I thought it would be really fun to look at all the books that I've given five stars, all of these, and read the reviews that are one star because I want to know why I loved some books and some people just hated them. Also, my five stars might not be everyone's five stars, I want to put that out there. For me, the criteria for a book to be five stars is that I enjoyed it. It doesn't mean if the writing is terrible, it doesn't mean if the plot is non-existent. I just have to love it in the moment. There are some books that I've given five stars that I wouldn't have given them five stars now, so just keep that in mind. It's very much a personal decision, so these are my five star books. And let's see why people gave them one star. Okay, I have my tablet over here and I have the books over there and let's read one review per book because I feel like there are 10 books and it might take a while if we read more but if you're enjoying this then I can definitely do it again I'm also thinking of taking books that I hated and seeing if there are any five-star reviews for them because I just want to know why you know so that might be a video I do in the future so so stay tuned for that I guess I mean I'm still to see if I do that but let's see the reviews. So upon searching the first title, I realized this was going to take me an eternity if I just search them as I go. So I screenshotted some reviews. I didn't read them fully because I, I want to be surprised with you. Um, and I screenshotted just to make this process faster because let's be honest, my phone can't take that much memory. So let's go through them. Okay, the first one is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. Um, also, I'm using Goodreads to read the reviews from because I know a lot of, I personally don't use Goodreads. I'm more of a story graph kind of person, but a lot of people put reviews in there and they're just easier to search. So that's why for once, just one time, I'm going to betray story graph, but just a little. So again, Red, White and Royal Blue. So. This review is from Alana who says, what the hell was that? Now I guess most of these five star reviews are legitimate because some of my longtime girlfriends read it and for the most part liked, loved it, but really? What did I miss? The story is silly, the characters are annoying, so annoying. I like that she put that, just to make very sure. The writing is not good. And dear God, the S scenes, what was all that about? You don't need to write a very hot and steamy uh, scene for us to feel the hotness and the chemistry between the characters, but here it was so weird. The characters could say, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say that because I don't want YouTube to ban me, but you can read them, I'll put them up here. Let me just move like this, yeah. But when they got to business, suddenly, business, uh, suddenly it was like reading the Bible for all its prudishness. Nothing happened. Well, something did happen because you were told that they just had a BJ or whatever. Yep, annoying as F. So I do agree with the fact that there aren't any sex scenes, but I do feel like they aren't necessary. I personally don't really like reading books and just reading five pages of them doing it. So I did quite like the fade to black. That was my preference. So some people might not like it. I just, I should move to the side so then I can put the text there, but I do agree with this comment, kind of. Um, I don't know, for me, it felt like a feel-good book. I didn't need the plot because I was there for the vibe, but maybe some people were there for the plot. And I do agree, it's not a book. I'd go for the plot. Vibes only, vibes only. So, the next book is 
Heaven's Official Blessing by Mok Sang Song Su uh, and Tian Guang Chi Su. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. And this review is from Jay. And Jay says, I can only assume that 99% of Goodreads community is fluent in Chinese and read it and read this in its original version, which must be godly or else I can't explain the high ratings it's had. The English translation can only be described as unreadable and the atrocities masquerading as prose are probably a violation of the Geneva Convention. Jay has an opinion. Um, I really can't excuse awful writing and I, can't, and I can stomach it even less when the plot is that boring. Let me be clear that this is not about the slow burn, which is the only valid romance, but literally everything else. I am still waiting for this to get better, as I was assured multiple times that it will, but I fear that when you say 70% in, you mean 70% into the whole series and not as I foolishly believe 70% into the book, which to be honest would also be about 70% too much. As I don't think I can become fluent in Chinese anytime soon and experience the good um, version of this book, I will have to end my journey now lest I risk another headache or worse from this writing style okay so <laughs> again i do kind of agree with the review because i do feel like if you're not really familiar with chinese writing it can be a bit daunting especially in the names because the names are difficult to pronounce there is a glossary at the end of this book where they tell you how to pronounce the names but it, it can be quite a lot sometimes i struggled a bit to remember which character is which because some of them have the same first or last name um so that can be quite difficult but i don't know i loved it i loved this book obviously i gave it five stars but <laughs> i just i love the slow burn um this is a series, so I was expecting it to take a bit. And also I'm very familiar with manhuas, which are basically the comic, well, the Chinese comic of the webtoons. So I did have experience going into this, if you will, but I do kind of agree with Jay. Also, this is the first book in the series, so it will take a bit to drag out. I feel like this didn't drag out as much as, um, What's the name? <laughs> the Scum Villain Self-Saving System. This was way faster and I just love the two main characters. So that's why for me, this is a five star and I'm sorry, Jay, I disagree. Kind of, I, I kind of agree, but you know. The next book is Almond by Wong Kyung Sung. Um, and let's see what the reviews have to say. Okay, so Sophie says zero out of five. What the F was this? concise to the point i like it because some reviews it's like they're writing essays i had to i had to scroll down a bit for them as well so they'd be normal length because some of them are insane okay <laughs> insane april who says this book is incredibly problematic filled with false diagnosis information and uh, at the author's own admission they had never met anyone with the condition. It was birthed from their scary pregnancy, worst nightmare fantasy. What they imagined it might be like to have a child with alexemia. So for those who don't know, this book talks about a boy who has alexemia, uh, which is a condition uh, which makes the person unable to feel emotion. And I do agree, it kind of glances over and I don't know, it doesn't take it as seriously, the disease, but in a way, again, I'm talking about this as a completely able-bodied person, so it might not be my place, but again, I feel like I love books that kind of show that even though you have a disease, you can live a completely normal life, even though, uh, what was it, Yoon Jai didn't necessarily have the most normal life, if you will, but I don't know if I'm making sense, but again, I agree and I disagree. It's so difficult because some I see the point they're making, but I just, I don't know how to say this because I really enjoyed it, but I understand how some people might not enjoy this and consider that the author kind of glanced over the entire issue. 
if you will. But I don't know. I, I'm just a sucker for a happy ending. And if this was a bad one, I would have hated it. So take it as you will, you know? Some people like it, others hate it. That's the thing about books, you know? You either read the reviews and kind of get a feel for it, both the good and the bad, or you just go blind into it and decide it by yourself. Because honestly, that's the only way you're actually see how a book actually is. Because no one can tell how you'll feel about this, which is a good point with the whole, this whole video, you know? Because I gave them five stars, other people hated them. Completely normal, completely. Okay, let's go into the next book. Uh, the next book is Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukegawa. Can you see that? Um, so here, <laughs> Ari says, I'm free! Um, <laughs> and then, this is a name I cannot read because it's in Arabic, but they say it was so boring. And then Marie says, Talking Beans, enough said. Um, I do agree, again shocking <laughs> this is not what you probably thought this was how this was going to be but that's the thing about japanese authors and korean and they just they talk about everyday life and there isn't necessarily an action plot it's just everyday life you know sometimes it's not as exciting and it takes time and it's just not everything has to be fast and about something and just that's what I loved about this book because it's a simple story and you just go through it. There's no stake, if you will, but um, I do see how some people might find them boring because it does take a while perhaps to get into them. And if you're not here for like a slow walk, you're definitely not getting a marathon. So I understand. Okay, so the next book, we have How to Kidnap the Rich by Rahul Raina. And again, a five star from me, but R says, the way it's written is so corny and so much cussing at first. It reminds me of a middle schooler who just learned those words and things saying them every five minutes is badass. The rest is unreadable. And then Arif Lalje, uh, says the author seems to think that all Indian men are crooks, wife beaters, kidnappers, adulterers, liars, cheaters, child abusers, sexist, womanizer, and idiots. The book completely loses the plot towards the end. And also, Emilio Amaro says insufferable Quentin Tarantino slash Chuck Palahniuk um, slash Brett Easton Ellis cosplay. I don't know. <laughs> This book, the author doesn't want it to be serious the way I read it. It's satire, it's irony, it's showing the bad side of India. It's not trying to glamorize it, which is why I feel like Arif thought, and also R thought that there's so much swearing, so many bad people, so much just in, everything that they disliked about it because I feel like the, the whole point of the book, the author didn't try to put India in a glorifying place. It tried to remind people that it's still corrupt. There are still bad people. Sure, they're like, there are two sides. And even in the book, he points this out. There are two sides, the poor and just where nothing works. And then the rich where everything seems fantastic. And this book has to be very much taken as a satire in order for you to like it or to just get into it because that's what it is. It's mocking India for its wrongdoings. There are some good things, obviously, but this book doesn't concentrate on that. And it's just a book, you know, it's, it's not that thick. So um, I do disagree with these comments for the first time, apparently, because the others, I did agree. So the next one, next we have Kim Jong, born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju. Uh, so as you can see, a lot of Asian authors, I tend to give them five stars, <laughs> but uh, Tegan said, okay, so I'm listening to Tegan. 
Understand that this is a really important book and I'm so glad it's out there and sparking discussions that need to happen. However, with that being said, I didn't like the style that this book was written in at all. I can appreciate it slightly and thought it was pretty cool slash unique when I first seen it, but there were actual references in this book and I felt like I was reading a paper for uni, not what I'm wanting to be honest. I also didn't feel anything for Kim ji Young when I was reading this either. I think this was due to the writing style. So yeah, even though this book is only 144 pages, I couldn't force myself to finish it. DNF'd around page 84. So <laughs> this is very strange to me. And I'm, again, different people, different opinion, completely fine. Um, but the reason I loved this book is because it read like a uni paper. For me, I love the references. That was one of the reasons I gave it a five star because I like that you could back it up. Um, and I understand this is fiction. There was no need for that. But the fact that it's fiction taken from reality, it just made it so much better for me. And this book wasn't written just, oh, I feel like it. I feel like this book wasn't just written for the sake of fiction it was written to point out a real problem in south korea and that is the way women are treated and i just i feel like the references are a vital part to it because a lot of people don't know what is happening over there and that's perfectly normal right you know um some things written in this book might be shocking and then the author says look here here's a reference this is what's happening in real life i didn't make this up so i love that about this book so i'm sorry tegan but i fully disagree this i love this for its references so again i loved reading uni essays as well so i might be the problem i might but i like to think i'm not so i did love this book and i disagree <laughs> Um, let's go to the next one. Okay, the next book is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu, by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. I'm slowly going out of breath. So Claudia says, um, despite the appealing subject, the writing ruined the reading for me. It is written more as a theater play than anything else with the right setup and characters. Everything is explained and the whole story takes place in the coffee shop. The blurb is very accurate, so I won't get into details. However, nothing in it um, to keep my interest. The characters are like puppets, their dialogue disjoints the action artificial. The time travel part is more of a disguise here. I wouldn't classify it in this subgenre. It's more of a magical realism story about regrets and things not said or done until too late and the possibility to change that. Well, sort of. Not my cup of coffee at all. <laughs> Again, I love this book for the exact reasons why Claudia hated them. I love that it was written like a play and she has a very good point. I think it's a she. Um, she has a very good point because the author writes plays. That's his job. And well, that was his job before he became an author, I think. But um, I think this uh, yeah, the Before the Coffee is adapted from a 1,110 Productions play by Kawaguchi. So this book was adapted from a play. This is what it was meant to be. Also the fiction part, the time travel, um, it was never meant to be science fiction. It was magical realism from the beginning. And again, this is a Japanese author and I don't want to classify them in the same bubble, but they all very much kind of go for real life nothing happens it's just slow and there's nothing just too much action too many things happening and that's what i like about them it's they're very chill and there's no really expectations if you will from them and there are some characters like i definitely cried in this book there are some stories in here that just broke my heart um so again reviews i disagree with because I love this book. I loved it. Okay, <laughs> there's so many. There are three more. We can do this if I still have battery. Okay. The next one is 
Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari. This I read a while ago and it's a mammoth of a book. But let's see, Louis Weinstein says that it's tedious, incoherent, unproven assertions. A never-ending sludge of what seemed to me to be summary paragraph of one Wikipedia article after another. Occasionally an interesting view or insight was presented, but these were never probably properly developed before the author was running off to another topic. So I do agree. It it was quite difficult to read. Um, there was a lot of information in there. Like it's packed. It talks about the agricultural revolution. It talks about the industrial revolution. It talks about everything from the beginning. That's why it's called Sapiens, a history of humankind. And the review is a bit weird because did you not read the title? It's right here. A history of humankind. What did you expect? Like, that's what it was supposed to be. Give you a history. And history was my favorite subject in high school. So I love this. It's difficult to read and it's not the kind of book you read in one sitting. 100% not. It's the kind of book you, you pick it up, you read a chapter or a sub chapter and then you leave it and then you need to read another and so on. Like, that's what it is. A history of humankind. So what's with the Wikipedia comments? This is what it is. Did you not read the title? Did you not read the blurb? How are you confused? <laughs> that is so strange to me. But again, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. I just don't have to agree to, with them. You know, I don't. So let's go to the next book. <laughs> the next one is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, the book everyone and their grandmother knows about. So let's see what Rhea has to think. He lived, he died. If you want to read about two gay cousins fucking in a tiny bit modernized ancient Greece, get it. Plato's Symposium could also be a fine alternative. I'm not going to read the whole review because Rhea wrote a lot. Some of these reviews are pages. I couldn't, um, but props to them, I guess. Um, this is so much funny. <laughs> this book wrecked me. Like it wrecked me. I was a sobbing mess at the end. I couldn't read the pages because my eyes were so blurry from tears. And then there's Rhea. So <laughs> to each their own, I guess. Um, I mean, again, it's about the Ill, uh, it's about Achilles and Patroclus reimagined. It does say on the back that they are lovers. Yes, torn between love and fear. It definitely says it. So, Rhea, I don't know what you were expecting from this book when you entered it. Because honestly, do people not read the blurb? How are you confused? Like, what? <laughs> So definitely not a review agree with, though now that you say that, like this makes one want to read Plato's Symposium because you never know, maybe it's interesting. If I like this, perhaps Rhea's recommendation could also work. And the last book that I wanted to talk about is The Secret History by Donna Tart. And now I will say even I found it a bit tedious and there were parts where even I struggled to get through, but at the, the end was worth it. Like, as I thought about it, I was like, I really enjoyed this. And I was in my dark academia moment at the time. So I gave this a five stars, but it, I, it is a bit tedious to read. So let's see what people have to say. Okay. So walking tragedy says, to be honest, if I wanted the thoughts of a bunch of classist elitists, who know dead classic languages, I just have dinner with my family. <laughs> this is top comment, top. And Walking Tragedy, I'm so sorry that you are in that kind of family because I'm sure it's not fun. <laughs> um, then Sophie says DNF at 38%, definitely not for me. It was beautiful aesthetic, but it's beyond boring. I agree. This, and again, is a book, all vibe, no plot, even though there is a plot, 
very much a plot, but definitely an aesthetic book. At least that's what it became. Um, and then Dot says everyone in this book should have died. Don't they kind of? <laughs> I mean, I agree. They're not likable characters. Most of them, like, that's the good part. They all have flaws. They're all terrible people. But have you ever met a teenager that isn't terrible? They're not lovable. No one likes teenagers. Not even teenagers. I hated teenagers as a child. I hated teenagers as a teenager. I hate teenagers as an adult. No one likes teenagers. And you expect this bunch to like each other? That's presumptuous. That's all on you. Like, you should have known about this. Like, teenagers are terrible people. Um, but yeah. <laughs> And the last one is from Maya Day, who says 500 pages of a bunch of classist, pretentious assholes drinking and smoking and talking about how superior they are for studying ancient Greek. Again, have you met a teenager? No one likes them. That's how they are. Pretentious. Every single one, no matter what their interests are. So that's on you, my friend. Like, you're alone in here there. So all on you so <laughs> let me scoot over here back okay so these were the reviews honestly i had such a fun time reading them because i agree and i disagree in equal measure and they're just so funny people are so funny when they hate things because they're just so unfiltered and i love that about them um this was so much fun i'm definitely doing the thing where I read five star review for my most hated books because this was a blast. I had a blast. Just such a good time. I hope you had as much fun as I did. And if you have any other YouTube video ideas, please let me know. And thank you for watching. I enjoyed this. I hope you did. Um, please leave a comment, like, subscribe if you like me because I promise I'm lovable. And for everyone that subscribed, thank you so much. I'm so happy <laughs> and I love every single one of you. So thank you for listening to me just yap all day. So thank you. This was today's video and I'll see you next time. Bye. I just give the earth my soul. Hear my thoughts bounce off the walls.